Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the devotional from Soldiers of the Cross. We will begin per usual with our opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you forgive my sins and that this prayer may reach you. Lord, we are marveled at your blessings, at the care and the love that you give us every day, the abundance of your love and your goodness. Thank you for our health, for the chance to enjoy the things you give us, the moments you grant us of happiness, of joy, of your presence. And we also thank you for the hard times that make us dependent of you, that make us grow in faith and search you, for reminding us that we are dust, we are nothing without you. You do all things perfectly, Lord, and you never leave our side, for you are our rock, our strong tower. Thank you for saving us, for coming into our lives. You were the best thing that ever happened to us. Therefore, let us bring you praise in every way that we can. Give us the confidence to live according to your will, come what may. Let us show you, Father, that we are eternally grateful. We may be physically tired, mentally worn out, but strengthen us, Lord, so that we may muster up courage and make an effort to continue to strive to please you and carry out your word because your promises are true and the reward is much greater than our suffering. Your reward is just and your blessing is the only one that enriches without adding any sorrow. The things of this earth cease to satisfy at one point and everything else gets us tired and it doesn't satiate but you wonderful beautiful father and savior you never failed to satisfy us blessed be your holy name god of heaven and earth we simply bless your name father and we praise your benevolence i pray for all these things in jesus name amen our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our devotional for today is titled, What God Sees. Written by Judith Stone translated by Maria Elena Cardona and taken from the book Mesa de Fe. Our biblical base is found in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 5 to 13. So says the word of God. And he said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, There remains yet the youngest, and there he is, keeping the sheep and samuel said to jesse send and bring him for we will not sit down till he comes here so he sent and brought him in now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking and the lord said arise anoint him for this is the one then samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Amen. May God receive the honor and the glory through the reading of his word. 
What God Sees Thousands of years ago, a man inspired by God said, Grace is deceitful, and beauty is vain. The woman who fears the Lord, she will be praised. And it is amazing that even though so much time has passed, these words have the same validity as if they had just been said today. Definitely, the human heart is easily inclined to vanity. The eyes are deceived, the mind is disturbed, and a person who was once innocent and simple becomes someone strange with a flamboyant appearance but hollow inside. A mind that could be occupied in seeking the fruit of the Spirit now does not have room for this because it is full of vain things that do not edify, although sometimes these vanities beautify the exterior part of the person. By this, I do not mean that we forget to pay attention to our physical appearance and personal grooming and that we walk around unkempt and unpresentable, but that these things do not become the center and the main thing in our life in such a way that we forget what really has the most value, which is cleansing our hearts of everything that distances us from God. As we have seen from the scriptures, this vanity of the heart is not something of these modern times. The inclination has always existed, hence the warning. And although it is true that it is very pleasant to meet a person with a beautifully groomed appearance before God, this has no value since what he looks at is the heart. Amen. This is true, my brothers and sisters, as the author stated. It's good to have a groomed appearance, to be aware of our hygiene, to be presentable before society and God. It's a very good thing, a must, in my opinion, to dress your best whenever you go to a professional setting, whenever you're going to church, especially to worship and meet with our Father because we're not just going any place. It's the house of the Lord where we are guests. As good civilians in general, it is healthy to be conscious of our exterior because it shows that we care. Lack of personal care can mean or lead to abandon, to disorder, turmoil, and not just physically, but mentally as well. So it's a good thing to groom and care for our physical as we have mentioned but all in moderation all in balance my dear friends at the end of the day we are flesh and bone we are not eternal and our bodies are just a temporary vessel for our souls beauty will pass like the flower that withers and dies we will decay and dissolve so we must keep in mind that it is necessary to balance things out. Let us take care of our bodies, yes, and our physique, but let us, more importantly, take care of our hearts and minds. Let us practice our spiritual grooming first, our moral cleansing first, polish our faith and wash away, sweep away all the dirt and gunk that is disturbing our wellness. Let us always remember that we are not here to please men and the world. It saddens me so much when I see young women getting plastic surgery and trying to look perfect with all these filters, which are false to begin with, and, you know, excessive makeup and dressing like who knows what, because they want the approval and attention of man. My brothers and sisters, we are not of this world. We were called to be sons and daughters of Christ. This world and all its glamour and glitter will pass. What will not pass is the word of God, the promises that he has for you and I, and the riches of his heavenly kingdom, which are glorious, light, joy, peace, happiness for all eternity. So, once again, my dear friends, 
Let us care for our appearance, yes, in a healthy and conscious manner. But before that, let us care for our hearts because that is what God sees. Amen. May God receive all the honor and the glory. And I pray that you were blessed through this devotional. But before we end the session, I kindly invite you to visit our YouTube channel, SEC English Ministry, for our daily Bible reading. And now we ask that the blessed love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the companion and communion of the Holy Spirit, our great counselor, be with all of his children now and forever. Amen. This was your sister, Kaylee Castaneda, praying that you have a beautiful day.